Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. So in this very requested video, I'm going to be giving you my top five tips for when you cast flowers into resin. So make sure you stay tuned. The first tip that I'm going to cover is dry flowers versus fresh flowers in resin. And as good as it would be to be able to put fresh flowers in resin, it is just not possible. Any object you cast into resin must be completely dry, no moisture whatsoever, because otherwise the moisture gets trapped in the resin and it has nowhere to go, so therefore it starts to rot those flowers. I have seen quite a few videos on YouTube putting fresh flowers in, and it might work for a day or two, maybe a week, but over time, that moisture has to go somewhere and it's just going to end up rotting the flowers in resin and you're just going to end up wasting a lot of resin. So you must use dry flowers when you're trying to cast into resin. Uh, there's three main ways that I like to dry my flowers out. The first way is with silica gel. Uh, silica gel you can buy um, on my Amazon store. I'll have the link down below. And it's something that you can reuse. So it has little colored beads in it. And you want to make sure you get the really tiny silica gel beads. You don't want to get big ones. You want really tiny floristry silica gel beads. And basically you put your big whole fresh flowers in that. And what it does is it soaks the moisture out really fast and therefore it helps lock that color in and stops the flower from rotting before it's ended up drying. So if you get a flower that's brand new and it's perfect, you're going to get really good results using silica beads, especially if you're doing a whole flower. And then once you've done with your silica beads, you can always put them back in the oven on a really low heat just to re-dry them back out. And that way you can keep reusing them again and again and again. Um, so they'll have like a little color bead and you'll notice that color might be, it might start off yellow and then slowly change to purple so once it's changed to purple it means those silica beads have got as much moisture as they can hold and that's just when you've got to re-dry them back out in the oven on the lowest heat possible you don't want to burn them or dry them out too much so I normally stick them in the oven for a few hours on like a hundred uh, degrees like that's I think the lowest my oven can go and that way I just can keep reusing them again and again the second way that I like to dry my flowers out is with my micro fleur press. This is really great because it dries them out super fast. You do have to keep an eye on them. You can't just chuck it in the microwave for five minutes because you can overcook the flowers. And what happens is you can bleach out the color too fast because you're drying it too fast. So normally I do it 30 second bursts and just keep rechecking on the flower. If it's a big flower, like a big rose that I've flattened out, it's going to take longer than obviously something that's a lot smaller or even thicker like a poppy versus a rose. A poppy's only got a few petals so it's going to dry out faster but a rose you know they're quite deep and compact. Um, even when you do flatten them out they've got quite a lot of petals so they just need a little bit longer in the microfleur press. And the last option you've got for drying your flowers out is just the old book method. Uh, that works great but just make sure that if you are using books and you're putting them through the uh, pages of the book don't pick a book that's got glossy um, paper to it because that's not going to soak up any moisture. You want something like an old phone book or something like that that's going to really soak up the moisture. My second tip for working with flowers in resin is choosing the right resin. There are so many resins out there on the market and they're not all made the same. My two favorite resins to work with are Art Resin and uh, the Crystal Casting Resin from Make Art Resin. Make Art Resin is an Australian brand and I'll leave the links below and Art Resin is an American brand but you can get it in Australia as well. I'm not sure if you can get Make Art Resin in other parts of the world except for Australia. Um, so those are my two favorite to use when I am working and they are slightly different So one is a casting resin and one is an art resin But the reason why I like both of these resins is because they've got a really high UV resistance rate You need to find a resin that has that because if you are putting flowers in and you're not adding any other color You're just doing clear casts with flowers in it 
there's going to be a big chunk of that resin that's going to remain clear. So if you pick a resin that maybe is a bit cheaper or doesn't have a good UV resistance rate, it's going to yellow over time and you're going to notice it a lot because it is a clear cast with resin. So you want to make sure that you are picking a really high quality resin that's got a really strong UV rate. I recommend doing some little test batches, putting some, a few flowers in and sticking it up on the windowsill, labeling them if you're going to try out a few different resins and seeing which resin stays clear the longest and doesn't yellow. Those are the two that I found work the best. Your Make Art Resin um, is great because it is a casting resin so it gets a lot less bubbles because it's a two to one ratio. And your Art Resin is a one to one ratio because it's not necessarily designed for casting. But if you stir it really carefully and you let the bubbles sit, you let the resin sit for a bit because it's got a really long working time and let all those bubbles rise to the surface, you can still use it. I do also like to use it just to do the uh, first coat to my flowers and then I slowly start filling it up with casting resin. So picking the right resin makes a massive difference when you are casting with flowers uh, just because they are a little bit trickier. It's a bit of a trickier technique. And also too, you don't want to be using all this resin to make a really beautiful piece and then it yellows within a month's time. My third tip is working in layers. And this is for two reasons. So flowers float. They're lighter, they're not as dense as the product you're putting them into, which is resin. So they're naturally gonna to float to the surface. So unless you pour a thin first layer and attach all your flowers where you want them to go, they're all gonna end up floating to the top. So whether you're using making a paperweight um, and you want all the flowers to be at the bottom, they're all gonna float up naturally and poke out. Or if you're doing a bowl, whatever you're doing, jewelry, you need to make sure that you pour your first layer where you place all your flowers, let that set and then start pouring more layers and the second reason why you want to do multiple pours is because resin gets hotter the deeper you pour it so if I was to pour resin that was about a centimeter deep and then resin that was about four centimeters deep I'm gonna notice the one that's four centimeters deep even though I've mixed them up in the same batch I've just divided one out into one centimeter one out into four centimeters one will set really fast and get super hot because the deeper your resin is, the faster it sets, the faster it kicks and the hotter it gets, which will then end up causing tons of bubbles because it's heating up too fast, reacting too soon. And you're also gonna get it where it might end up cooking your flowers in the resin and bleaching them, changing the color. So you definitely wanna do multiple layers, no matter how deep you're doing it, the deeper, the more layers you need to do. Even if you are using a casting resin and it says you can pour up to six centimeters or whatever it says, I don't recommend that because it just gets too hot the deeper you pour it and it'll end up just creating more bubbles or it will just, cook your flowers, change the color of them, and that's something that you just don't want to happen. Test flowers before you do big artworks. Uh, not all flowers work well in resin. Some will look great once they're dry out of the resin, and then you put them in and they completely change color. So if you've never worked with that particular flower before, I recommend like, you know, painting one of the petals with resin, letting it set, seeing if it does change color in the resin. Sometimes purple flowers will go green in resin. And if you've just done a big pour and you've got this beautiful arrangement, um, it is can just ruin the whole piece. Uh, so definitely check if you haven't worked with them. Some flowers that are like really fuzzy, like the these white leaves, I have no idea what they're called, um, or fox's tails and stuff, sometimes they don't look amazing in resin because they're all fuzzy and then when you put resin on them, it makes them look wet or brown or ugly. So I would recommend if you do are doing working with new flowers, take one of them, test it out before you make a really beautiful piece, just to make sure it's gonna look how you want it to look in resin. Um, especially if you are doing a commission piece, you are taking bridal bouquets and preserving them. Uh, it might be worth leaving that particular flower out if it's gonna go green or if it's gonna completely mess up the whole look and feel and just letting the bride know like, oh, this flower's not suitable. So I always recommend before you do like big pieces, uh, a little bit of trial and error, you could just make a paperweight with them um, just to see how they go with the resin. 
And my last tip for working with flowers in resin, and this one is a really common question that I get asked a lot, is sometimes flowers go translucent, like a petal will go translucent. Your flowers might change in the resin, um, change color, all of that. So basically this happens because you might've had like a damaged petal where it's got a little broken um, entry where the resin can seep through and actually go into the petal, which then makes the petal go translucent. So it's really important that as you put your petals in try to only use flowers that aren't damaged or remove damaged petals it can be hard because I do a lot of work uh, casting bridal bouquets and they don't always come to me in like the perfect condition um, and so I know I'm not going to get like a perfect flower I might get a few bits that come through translucent uh, just because that's the quality of the you know flower that I'm getting but if you are buying brand new flowers just to create some really beautiful pieces um, try to buy ones that are perfect they're not damaged and be really careful when you do dry them out um, to not break any of your petals or remove any of those damaged petals just so you don't get give the resin more of a chance to seep in and create that translucent effect. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed all of those tips. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer them. And working with flowers in resin can be a little bit of a tricky technique. Uh, so I'm always happy to do uh, like five more tips if that is a video that you guys would like to see. Uh, talking more about flowers in resin as there is a lot more to cover. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up as that really helps me out and it lets YouTube know to show this video to more people. And if you're new to my channel, why not subscribe? I post tons of art, craft and DIY videos every single week. And if you haven't already, hit the notification bell so that way you get notified every single time I upload so that way you do not miss out on a new video. Uh, and don't forget to follow me on all of my other social medias. I have TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, I have all of them. So thank you guys so much for watching.